The main thing that I would like my colleagues in the arts and humanities to know about SOTL in our fields is that it's still being invented. So it isn't a matter of learning how to do something new and different that you've never done before. It's a matter of learning how to apply the ways of thinking that you are already doing to a different set of texts and to a different set of problems. Don't be put off by the alien and often alienating terminology of data and methodology that sometimes if you continue to read, you'll discover um, interesting things about important stuff. And if you are an arts and humanities um, faculty member who wants to do SOTL, I would say um, if you have something important to say, then you have to try and um, be open to your own assumptions about your discipline and also open to other disciplinary methods, even if it's uncomfortable. It's done best when we bring our training and discipline, habits of mind, and intellectual virtues to the projects. I sometimes run into philosophers who do scholarship of teaching and learning and they see scholarship of teaching and learning as unrelated to their life as a philosopher. I think it's done best when we bring that training to the work that we're doing in the scholarship of teaching and learning and it often feels um, anemic or not sufficiently rich when we leave that part of us, of ourselves, out both because we have expertise that we are no longer bringing, but also we chose to be philosophers, say, or in the arts and humanities because we value those ways of inquiring, those ways of knowing, those ways of making meaning. And to ignore those, I think, really is a, a real cost to the quality of the work in arts and humanities, scholarship of teaching and learning. It's a very rewarding experience and that um, it's not so far off the beaten track of inquiry than the kind of reflection and inquiry they normally do. It's just a little more systematized. And therefore, they should be encouraged to do more of it. I think it's this, you know, fish out of water syndrome that they feel that they, that isn't the pool they belong in, you know, kind of thing. Um, uh, but we need more of them to do it. We need more departments to encourage it. Um, I think the connection that has been made between assessment and SOTL, while in my case it actually has, I'm, I'm the assessment coordinator in my department and so all of my SOTL work has come out of that. In most, depart, most theater or arts departments, assessment is usually a bad word because there is a mindset among artists that you cannot be assessed. It's the objectivity that is re seemingly required of assessment and SOTL that puts them off. My argument is that, and this is where embodied knowledge comes in, that subjective knowledge is our field. So that is the point of view, the starting point from which we should approach doing SOTL. We're not going to be, it's not a lab. It's a studio space that we are investigating. So it's going to have different kinds of ideas of rigor and that they should not compare themselves to STEM scientists or um, social scientists even, that they're doing a different kind of inquiry into student learning. I think I would most like arts and humanities people, especially if I'm speaking to my music colleagues, and especially if I'm speaking to my music performance colleagues, to know that they don't have to soft pedal what they do. Um, or, nor do they have to become pseudo social scientists um, and end up feeling guilty about that. I, I, think, I think that's the worst sort of trap to fall in. I, I know from being around my music performance colleagues that they do have designs for learning and they do whether they are explicit about it or not differentiate expert learning from novice learning and I think it's a matter of 
becoming more explicit about how they do that and becoming um, more also more assertive about how they how they do that um, that they actually have a lot to teach people. I want them to know that there's a value in thinking more deeply about what we want our students to learn and how we think we learn it. Um, we are, as a discipline, and I can speak more in some ways for literary studies and cultural studies than I can perhaps for music and theater and other, in philosophy certainly. Um, in literary studies, we are curiously resistant to any idea about data, uh, to ideas about evidence, and to any idea that what happens in our classrooms is measurable. So the number one thing I want my colleagues to know is that SOTL in our field, I'm not willing to let go of evidence, but it isn't data and it isn't about measuring. It is about that thick narration, about describing and narrating and telling stories, and that that's useful to us, and that we can use the texts of student learning as evidence, and that that doesn't have to take us outside of the work we're comfortable with, but that it might make us work harder and think differently and have some self-doubt about whether, in fact, what we know, or what we think we do, and what we think we know, are actually true. One thing I hope for is um, that colleagues in the arts and humanities, I want them to understand something about SOTL, um, and something about those of us who are interested in SOTL. Uh, we often talk about how do we welcome our colleagues into the field, how do we make room for them in terms of methods. Um, but I also think about our arts and humanities colleagues who don't want to do SOTL for a variety of reasons, and that's, that's perfectly fine. Not everyone has to do it, not everyone should do it, and um, I think we have good people trying to do it and we'll get more good people, but it doesn't have to be 100%. Uh, what I want for the many who don't do SOTL, they remain in their disciplinary research areas, um, is I want them to turn towards SOTL, to look at what we're doing, to uh, become familiar with, um, just familiar is fine, the kinds of questions we're, we're asking, the kinds of um, findings, if you will, that we're coming upon, what we're learning about our students' learning, um, your students' learning and our students' learning. Um, so to find value and connection in what we're doing, what we're producing, um, and not feel um, compelled uh, or required to get involved. I think what we're doing is, um, in part, we're, we're producing, if you will, uh, materials that are beneficial, again, not just to those of us who are in SOTL, but those of us across the academy. Um, and lately I've been thinking about reaching those colleagues who um, don't want to get involved but may become, if you will, consumers of SOTL. I think we have a lot to offer.